Hello biologists. This is our first video for the course and this one is on the scientific method and experimental design. As we add more details about this, it might be confusing, but I want you to keep in mind that the scientific method is simply a way to help organize experiments. To keep experiments organized, there are going to be some rules. And the first rule I want to teach you about is that scientific experiments have two types of variables. Those variables are referred to as the independent variable and the dependent variable. Let me explain what each of those is. The independent variable is simply the one thing you change between groups when setting up. So it was no mistake that I replaced the i in independent variable with the number 1. That's a mnemonic or a memory trick that you can use to remember what the independent variable means. Independent is the one thing that changes. For right now, write down the definition and we're going to look at a whole bunch of examples. The other type of variable is called the dependent variable. Now let's define that. In an experiment, the dependent variable is what you measure, count, or observe during your experiment. The memory trick that I use to remember this one is that D in the word dependent reminds me of the D, to, D in data, and data is what you're measuring or counting during your experiment. Now, let's check out an example to put some of this to use. Here's an example of the experiment. The length of goldfish seems to be affected by the size of the tank they live in. A student set up six fish tanks of increasing size in a classroom. She put one goldfish in each tank. She measured the length of each goldfish every 48 hours for three months. Now remember the definition of those two variables. The independent variable is the one thing that changes between the groups. So in this case, the one thing that's changing is that the fish tanks are different sizes. So that'll be our independent variable. Our dependent variable is what is being measured, counted, or observed during the experiment. And this is going to be the length of each goldfish. Now there's some other rules to experiments as well. Besides the independent and dependent variable, every experiment is going to have constants. And constants, the definition for that is that everything has to stay the same between the groups except the independent variable. The way I remember this, the memory trick, is that I think about constant as being something like driving your car at a constant speed. So outside of biology, when you think of constant, you think about something staying the same. So that word constant means the same, just like you can drive your car at a, at a constant speed, and that means you're not changing speeds. Your speed is staying the same. Now constants are really important because constants let us know that only the one thing that changed, the independent variable, is causing any differences that we see in our experiment. Let's look back at that example. Now remember, we change the tank size that the fish are being grown in, and what we're measuring to see if that change makes a difference is we're going to measure the length of goldfish. But when we read through this, what has to stay the same? Well, in this case, what's staying the same is she'd be using the same number of fish per tank. It says that the fish tanks were in a classroom, so that's the same room for the tanks. What else is the same? All of these fish are goldfish, so the same species, and she did the measurements at the same time. It says every 48 hours for three months. So even though the, the tank size changed, all of this other stuff stayed the same, so that we know if we saw any differences, it would be because of the tank, not because she has goldfish in one and, say, like bass or guppies in another. Now the last thing we want to go over today, another rule of designing experiments or the scientific method, is a hypothesis. Now you've probably learned a hypothesis as being an educated guess, and we want to add another layer of detail to that. So we're going to say a hypothesis is an educated guess that makes a prediction, and a hypothesis is testable with an experiment 
And to make a hypothesis really easy to find and understand, we use a format called the if-then format. Let's go back to our example with the goldfish to see how a hypothesis works. So now at the bottom we have a spot for writing our hypothesis. If blank, then blank. What can be confusing is what goes first and what goes second. So what can we plug in? Well, what goes first is the independent variable, and what goes second is the dependent variable. Remember when we used that memory trick where we replaced the i of independent variable with the number 1? Well, that's going to be really handy here because look what goes first in the hypothesis, the independent variable. And there's that 1 to remind us that the independent variable goes first. So, if we just plug those in there, the independent variable right here of different tank sizes and the dependent variable right here, length of goldfish, we're going to sound kind of like a caveman. If different tank sizes, then length of goldfish. But you get the idea here. So the hypothesis could be if different tank sizes are used to grow fish, then the length of goldfish will be the longest in the biggest tanks. Does that make a prediction? Yeah, the bigger the tank, the longer the goldfish. Is it testable? Certainly, we can use the experiment that's described above. So, now your goal is going to be to practice, practice, practice. Because designing an experiment, identifying variables, identifying constants, and writing a hypothesis is a huge skill in this class that you're going to see over and over again. The faster you become an expert, the easiest, easier this class is going to be.